Hi guys! So it's Sunday again, so it's time to talk about the book that I've been reading this week. And this week it has been Little Dorrit by Charles Dickens. Um, I don't know if you saw my announcement video for the week, um, for this week's book, um, but I had previously started to read this book after seeing the BBC drama, which I absolutely loved. I'll be talking about that in a bit. Um, started reading it, put it down because I got distracted by something and never picked it up again. So this was a kind of first read for me <laughs> because... But the bit that I, that the section that I had read, um, obviously in reading the book this week, I realised I'd read maybe about 100 pages and this is nearly 700 pages. So I read a chunk of it, but not an, a good amount um, of it, as it were. So going into this week um, was, yeah, very interesting. It's been a bit of a tougher week because of, well, so many pages to read. Plus, because this has been my longest book so far of the, of the book challenge. But also because of the Olympics. I mean, um, staying up till uh, really late and then having to get up really early for work and do, you know, full day of work and then going, OK, I'm going to be good. I'm going to go to bed early, but then getting distracted again by the Olympics and staying up late. So it's been a bit of a, <laughs> a battle this week <laughs> to get through this book, but I have just finished now um, and I have absolutely loved it. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Charles Dickens. I think he was one of the, the best writers um, around. His his stories are absolutely phenomenal and he has an amazing art in writing names that are so perfect for his characters. Um, they're, they're just absolutely extraordinary. There's one name um, of Charles Dickens that I really, really love. Um, and it's from the novel Hard Times, which is one of the other books um, that in... Um, the jar for, of the, for this uh, year because I think it's an extraordinary read and uh, it's uh, a horrible horrible headmaster and his name is Mr McChokum Child and it just you could just it, it's so brilliant how you can you can just see why that fits you know this horrible horrible head teacher of a school um whose name is associated with choking children. You know, it's absolutely brilliant. But in Little Dorrit, there are also some absolutely amazing um, characters and such. Now, my I've got four favourite characters um, in this book. First of all um, is Little Dorrit herself, who the book is named after. Her name is actually Amy. Now, Little Dorrit, uh, should explain at this point, follows Amy Dorrit, and her family who all live in the Marshalsea. Marshalsea is a place where people who were in debt were put to basically, it's kind of a prison, but not an official prison. They were put there to um, where they had to stay until they paid off their debts, but obviously being there meant that they couldn't earn a living, so therefore, you know, they had their family and such had to, had to, um, uh, you know, form the, collect the money and such and everything to get them out. In some cases, the entire family would move into the Marshall Sea with them. Sometimes it would be just, it would be just them. And in this case, Amy and her entire family lived there. Amy was actually born in the Marshall Sea and she's lived there her entire life. She's about um, 18, um, yeah, about 17, 18 at the beginning of the book. Uh, and she, yeah, she lives there with her quite eccentric father and her brother and sister. Well, her brother and sister don't live there. Her sister lives um, with their uncle um, just outside of the Marshal Sea. And Tip, her brother, he pretends each night that he is going home um, to you know, so her, his father doesn't know that he's actually in debt as well and he's imprisoned in the Marshall Sea. So he pretends each day to, to leave the Marshall Sea when in fact he's just going over to the other side and, you know, going back to his place to, to spend the night. Now, in the course of the, of the story, she comes across a man called Arthur Clennam, who's my second favourite character. Uh, and Arthur is a man who um, has been living in China with his father for many, many years, um, well over a decade. And he has come to London to see his mother because his father has just died. And his father told him something very um, interesting when he died in that he gave Arthur a watch and he says, read, look at it, read it out. And he opens um, the, the watch or it's on the back of the watch. I can't remember exactly which one it is now. And it has um, DNF 
engraved, you know, in it. And he thinks it's someone's initials. And his father says, no, do not forget. We are all guilty. Do not forget. And then he dies. So Arthur's on this, he's completely perplexed by this. He doesn't understand what he means. So he goes to see his mother. And it's all about him finding out what this means um and he meets little dorrit on the way who intrigues him because little dorrit works um during the day um well a few days a week should i say not every day during the day um for arthur's mother mrs clennam um doing sewing and kind of being a companion to her mrs clennam um is paralyzed from uh kind of the waist down she uh, she stayed in her bedroom for 12 years of pretty much the whole the amount of, pretty much the whole the entire amount of time that um arthur's been overseas she's stayed in that room she's very cold she doesn't want to be around arthur you know she she just wants to be by herself um and obviously you know various things uh are learnt throughout the course of the story now my third favorite character is maggie maggie is a joy i absolutely Door, Maggie. She um, is Amy's best friend, basically. Um, she calls uh, Amy Little Mother. Now, Maggie is a very interesting character because she, when she was 10 years old, she contracted an, an illness. We don't know exactly what it was. Um, it was a fever of some sort. She got better, but mentally she's remained the same age. She's still a 10 year old girl. But Maggie is now about 30 but she's still got the you know she still thinks she's 10 years old so the way that she comes out with things is she's always running around and doing this that and the other um she's kind of mischievous and um you know she has to, she runs errands for everybody and um she's she's just an absolute joy and how she finds beauty and wonder in things that you know we can take for granted and such um as adults seeing adult seeing something in a wonderful way it's quite a wonderful thing um and my my last favorite character is flora flora finching now flora was a really good friend of arthur's when they were children they were um they were kind of childhood sweethearts but one thing led to another and arthur was taken away from by his dad to China and so he completely lost touch with Flora and he just so happens to stumble across um her father and you know now that he's back in London and finds that she's still the excitable girl that he that he loved you know she's she a bit um time has moved on she's now a widow she it's really quite a, cruel her her way in which Charles Dickens describes her but I'll explain why in a moment um but she's you know kind of overweight she's uh, aged quite quite a lot um you know they, he's very um she she always wears her hair like in very perfect ringlets like she's a little child and she's very giddy and all around Arthur and oh this oh oh Arthur, oh you know because she still has um feelings for him um that she kind of practically throws herself at him and makes a, an embarrassment of herself. But she's a really lovely, lovely girl. She's just, you know, caught in a situation where, you know, she lives with her father. She has to look after her father. She's got no one to, to um, lo you know, love her in a sense. And then all of a sudden, this man who she adored as a child has come back into her life and automatically she assumes oh we're gonna fall in love we're gonna be together da, 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 da. um so she goes back to reverts back to very much that childlike um wonderment um crush on on, on arthur that she had and um yeah it's very interesting what happens with 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 flora and their relationship now the reason why charles dickens wrote flora like that it comes back to his um personal life now charles dickens obviously victorian writer first um he he was a very interesting guy and he's he kind of had a very odd i think that's probably the right word to say obsession with women uh in regards to like 
a, a lot of women, um, you know, girls, including Little Dorrit, in his various novels, are 17, very pretty, thin, perfect, you know, have certain qualities about them. And you see them in every single one of his books. Now, the reason why is because he, it's it's his sister-in-law who he's, who he's describing. Her name is just completely fallen out of my head. I'm sorry, I can't recall her name. Um, but she, he was obsessed with her. He adored her. And one day, he and his wife and, and his sister-in-law had gone to the theatre. He came back. They were walking up the stairs to go to bed and all of a sudden his sister-in-law fell back into his arms and died. Just like that. She just went. And he was devastated. He he got to the point where he, just, he said that he wanted to be buried with his sister-in-law and not his wife when 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 he died um he you know he was that obsessed with her so that's why you have this certain um character you know a <laughs> female character appearing in each of, of of his books because he's bringing her back to life now with flora as i said he was quite cruel because um one when, when he was getting famous uh, uh he got a letter from a girl who he admired when he was younger, um, saying, oh, you know, I've heard, you know, you've gotten famous and everything, well done you, I'd love to meet up with you again, I live nearby, you know, let me know when you're free, that kind of thing. And he was like, oh yes, I'd love to meet you, oh, it'd be absolutely wonderful, and he kind of went back to his childhood sense of this girl, she was so beautiful and stunning and oh I haven't seen her for years she'll be the same stunning beauty um and he said basically said yeah I'll do it and he kind of just said this in his letter I bet you're still a stunning beauty and she wrote back and went uh no actually I'm you know I'm older I've lost my teeth um I'm I'm fat I'm like and, and he wouldn't believe it and then he saw her and then he was disgusted by her and wouldn't would hardly spend any time with her and then he never saw her again after that and it was quite cruel so he wrote this into little dorrit and basically was a way of making fun of her which is just horrible um is yeah but yeah charles dickens he was an interesting fellow now i have to say there is an aspect to this book which is so sad and it's so beautifully written because you can see it's from his own life and that is the Marshall Sea prison now the reason why it's so sad and so poignant I think is because it haunts him it, well I should say it haunted him because obviously he's no longer alive um all of his life his father when he was about 10 years old um was put in the Marshall Sea prison he was in debt and so his so Charles and everything, um, his life, he was perfectly happy. And then all of a sudden his father's in prison. He had to go and work in a workhouse, um, sticking labels on bottles, um, to, you know, to be able to earn some money to get his father out of prison. Um, he, their family went from a, a comfortable, um, lower middle class life, even though he hated being lower middle class, but still it was, it was a comf it was somewhat comfortable and then have that ripped away from him he really really um wasn't happy with his dad for for that and it, it's kind of you can see that in david copperfield as well david copperfield is basically him as a, as a child he even goes and has to work as uh you know, sticking labels on bottles at a workhouse is David at one point uh, when he's about 10 years old. So you can really see in, in David Copperfield, um, Charles Dickens throughout his life. But it's very poignant when he writes about the Marshall Sea. It's very, um, very raw, very real. And I loved that about re when re reading this book. Um, I felt so in that world and that building and how important it is to Mr. Dorrit, who has been there for 30 years, he is the father, he's called the father of the Marshall Sea because he's the longest resident there. Um, he, it's, it's a stunning 
read about that place. But I, I, I think Charles Dickens' writing is stunning anyway, and I want to read a passage. It's my favourite passage of the book. Um, and you'll have to forgive me, I have to put my glasses on for this. Usually I wear glasses, but in these videos, whenever I put my glasses on, you can only see the screen reflected, and so you can't see my face really. Um, but I need them to be able to read this because the text is so small. So there we go. So, um, so this is a, a moment where um, it's very sad. Um, we've had a, a couple of characters pass away. I won't say who, but it's the way in which she describes the scene of um, the, what is found the next day is so beautiful. And I think it really shows how amazing writer Charles Dickens was. So here we go. It was a moonlit night, but the moon rose late, being long past the full. When it was high in the peaceful firmament, it shone through half-closed lattice blinds in a seldom room where the stumblings and wanderings of a life had so lately ended. Two quiet figures were within the room, two figures equally still and impassive, equally removed by an untraversable distance from the teeming earth and all it, that it contains through those soon to lie in it. One figure reposed upon the bed, the other, kneeling on the floor, drooped over it, the arms easily and peaceably resting on the coverlet, the face bowed down so that the lips touched the hand over with which its last breath it had bent. The two brothers were before their father, far beyond the twilight judgments of this world, high above its mist and obscurities. So I think that is just stunning. Um, the way in which he captures the reality of Victorian life, the harshness, the cruelty, the wonderment. It, it, he was just an extraordinary writer, and that's why I love him. Um, I'd definitely read Little Dorrit again. I, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was so so much fun. And with these books, there's so many characters. I mean, I could go on for like another hour or something just talking about the list of characters on this book because there's so many of them. They're absolutely wonderful. I especially like Fanny as well. I think she's brilliant. Um, which is Amy's older sister who's an actress. Um, and there's lots of storylines coming through and how they come and to, together and and come together and lynch together and everything. It's, it's extraordinary how he was able to come up with all these ideas. And obviously he wrote so many um, stories at the same time um, and interweaving all of these storylines. It's, it's amazing. I, I, he's just, I bow to his greatness, um, you know. I, I love him and I really strongly recommend any of his works um but yeah I really really enjoyed Little Dorrit it can be a little bit hard to get into if you're not used to his writing because of um being a Victorian writer he's he does like to talk a lot about you know descriptions of various places and especially he does that with this one in, about the Marshal Sea but that's because the Marshal Sea is so important to the story what it represents what it is and the circumlocution office which is um completely fictional but um it's basically his Charles Dickens way of getting a government structure um you know and passing documents to each different department where they have to be signed and countersigned and this on that lot in order to make a claim um and not being able to get any answers from anywhere about anything um it's you know it's a way of charles dickens basically sticking his finger up at the america Gov uh, sorry the london government department systems and such um very funny to to read and when you know you know that's what it what it is about but yeah it's very there's a lot of descriptions about that building as well, but what it represents, it, it's important. It has to be said, just as with um, the Marshall Sea. But yeah, the characters are extraordinary. The stories are great. Um, the the various you know situations that they each get into, and I especially love Maggie, as I said, the constantly yelling "Little Mother" um, and dancing around the streets and all this lot and getting into trouble. Uh, I think it's brilliant. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about adaptations. Um, the only TV slash film adaptation that I know, so therefore I don't have any um, other <laughs> adaptation TV and film wise to compare to, is the BBC Little Dorrit. This was the drama that led me to the book, um, and it's fantastic. Now having read the book, they were so faithful to the book. I'm I'm flabbergasted. Kind of like the Poldark adaptations recently done by the BBC. Um they have done so well um 
ad adapting this. Obviously, there's some things that we've had to cut out or slightly tweak, but those tweaks are only minor. You know, it doesn't, they haven't like completely rewritten one storyline or something. But yeah, there are little things that they've had to take out, but that's because of pacing reasons and the stuff that they've taken out. I totally understand why there was nothing that they took out that was a huge significance to the stories as such. They've done brilliantly. This is so well acted, especially, you know, big, you know, yay for his um, uh, depiction of Blanmar is Andy Serkis. He's brilliant in this. Um, all the cast are amazing, but I especially like, like Andy Serkis in it. And uh, Claire Foy, he plays uh, Amy. She was absolutely brilliant. This, I think this was the first thing I saw her in. Um, but yeah, she's, she's an awesome actress as well. So yeah, I definitely thoroughly recommend this. But if you want to have another adaptation that BBC did, um, which is just as good, um, but on a different format. There is the radio um, little direct adaptation um, they did for the BBC Radio 4, its entire dramatised version. Really fantastically done. Again, this one is shorter than the TV one, so this has got a lot more cut out of it, but again, there's nothing, it doesn't um, lose the whole, you know, the various storylines intertwined. It doesn't lose the heart of the story, the character, the story, none of that. So it's still, I listen to this all the time and, I, you know, I watch this all the time and I'm perfectly, perfectly happy with both. They approach it obviously in different ways because a radio um, drama and a TV drama you've got to do different things because of obviously radio you can't see what's going on um but i am perf i perfectly love both of them i think they're both fantastic so i strongly recommend them both okay guys i'm going to stop there um so yeah i will be back soon uh and i'll see what the next book in the challenge will be and i will see you guys soon all right then bye